Welcome back to the channel. Well, as you can tell, I'm living the life of luxury right now. Man, look how blurry that thing is. Let me clean y'all off. What in the world is up with this camera? As y'all can tell, I'm living the life of luxury right now. Look at this. Over here borrowing Nigel's shop to borrow Nigel's converter. So the other day, my car, or the converter in it, it just wasn't a mile per hour on what we think it should be. And ever since I had that line right here, I had I had a pressure regulator right here. Let me turn the light on for you. I had a pressure regulator bolted up right here, hooked in, teed into the system, and it blowed out last year. And when it blowed out, it blew the whole track down. So I got rid of that. Well, ended up, I went through and uh, messing with it. The car ain't never 60 footed the same. The converter's been like it's been broke. So Nigel said, you want to? You can borrow this. Look, that's what happens when you got money. Y'all don't tell Nigel, but look. Look that baller converter right there. So I'm borrowing Nigel. We changed the stator out to the stator that he went 439 with. We put the loosest stator basically he has, and we're going to put it all back in here, and we're going to go through and uh, see how the car does. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going through changing the converter out. When we get done changing the converter out, we're going to go through and... uh. We're gonna plot the rear suspension and, and see what the anti-squat is. I honestly don't know what the anti-squat is on this car because I ain't never done it. I just know what works. Eyeball, it's always, it's never lied to me, you know? So we're gonna plot it, see what it is, see if we make some changes. If we're not, we might leave it. We'll figure out, we might even show y'all how to check your anti-squat. I, I might get John over here to do a video on how to check your anti-squat and your suspension. That's probably a pretty good video, what you think? Oh well, so let's get this thing back together. Well, I didn't realize Nigel's converter took a different, took a little spacer deal up in here, different than what mine did. So now we get to pop it back apart to put it back together. All right, so we go through and uh, we got it set up on these blocks right here. This makes it easier to do the measuring. So I got to go through and make sure. Yeah, I got it all loose right there. So we're gonna get on it here in just a minute. We're gonna do the measurement. We'll show you how you measure anti squat. That way you can see how much anti squat the car has in it. All right, so this is what we're going to go through and go off of. And like John said, on the horizontal upper control arm length, you can't go horizontally when you got a triangulated four link set up. So basically, you're going to measure, instead of measuring at an angle, you're going to measure straight across from bolt to bolt to get the right length that you need. That's just an estimate. That's not exactly... Like I said, you can't go from this point because that's diagonal. So with it being horizontal on the upper control arm, we're going to measure, say, if it's from here to here, we're going to measure from here to there in an imaginary straight line to get that length. So let's get in here and get some measurements real quick. Oh, and with this car being up on blocks like it is, you have to subtract your heights out of here. So say our blocks are uh, 12 inches. So t 12 inches to here is the height of the block but that ain't actually the height that you got to go off the wheel there so the wheel itself is 11 and a quarter right there from the very bottom of the wheel so we'll take 11 and a quarter off of all our measurements from the floor to get our heights because if we just add 11 and a quarter then the anti squat's gonna be really skewed so you gotta you gotta subtract that out of it all right so here's what my measurements are after we subtracted their the ground height out of it and it come out to be a hundred and what was it? 180. 180% anti-squat. But with this car right here, so say we are at 180%. 180.5. 180. 180%. 0.88. That's fine. But what's that make our length? 44.91. That makes us 44.91. The only reason why this car works really well is because how long that is. So, like, on, on the red car, what is it on the red car? Uh, I haven't done it in a long time, but I think it's like 30, 32 inches. About 32 inches. So, let me explain to y'all what this number is. This is kind of the more important number than what this is because the longer this is, the less important that is, the more calm that is. So, like, so if I, you take 180% at 44 inches is more calm than if this was 160% and this was at 32 or if this was at whatever the shortened distance because the shorter this is, the less leverage it has over the chassis. So therefore it makes it more radical. So this, even though this is a high number, we can change this number, but if we change this number, it's gonna bring the length out at the right height of the car because the car is sitting high. If I lower the car, all these numbers will be changed 
drastically because you're bringing it back. But let me show y'all what the 44.91, show you what that is. So we bring 44.91 off that, that puts our instant center here. And then it, and then it says our, our actual instant center is 18 inches up. So if you do the math off the floor, adding the floor, right about right here is where our instant center. So if you draw our lines, like I showed you on my other video, right here is where everything intersects at is at this point. And that's the only reason why the car works good because the gravity point starts there. Let me move that light right there. You go. The gravity point's there. So if you move that line backwards, the chassis has less control of this rear end, so it's more radical. But because I got a lot of numbers, when you bring it out further, it puts the center point there where it was still wheelie right there because the center of gravity of the car is probably, if I had to guess, it's somewhere in this area here if you measure the weight of the car versus that we're closer to the center of the car. So it can still wheelie there, but it still has enough control over the chassis to keep it from being just radical. Now, if I lower the back of the car, it can change those numbers, but we got the big heavy springs on it with the weight. So all that stuff changes. So I'm going to do the math on it now with, say, we let's lower the car. Let's take two inches out of the back of the car, out of all the numbers, and see what we have. So right there's number. If you just lower the car two inches like it normally is, that's what my that's what my anti squat is, and that's where my numbers are. So you think we shorten the car up? So as we lower it, the car anti squat drops, but the car gets more radical because it has more yank to it because our our control arm length gets shorter. So right now with the ride height, it's not as bad because we got length. When you shorten the length up, then it gets more yank to it. So then the anti-squat changes. Even though the percentage goes down, it has more yank up because it has a shorter arm to yank with. Has, the chassis actually has less mechanical force over the rear end, so therefore the rear end can yank harder. The longer your pull bar is, the more strength you have. So th if this is your human and this is your strength, the longer you bring this bar out here, the more control it has over that rear end. The shorter you bring that bar up, the less power the more power that rear end has over the bar so therefore it yanks it a lot faster than it does if it puts it out here with leverage and that's just how that imaginary system works like i said ain't none of this stuff ain't none of this scientific this is all geometry it's all basic principle like i said that's how you get a car to work but you can do like i always told y'all before you can draw out your lines and where they intersect that's where you find your instant center at and this converter was broke if you listen You can hear something inside of it. So something has come apart in it. So we're going to send it back, get it checked out, get it fixed, put it in something else, or put it back in it. We'll figure out whatever we're going to do. Only time will tell.